By the end of this short lesson, you'll be able to explain the answers to the following questions to your friends. Why are acid reflux medications one of the fastest growing groups of medications in the U.S.? Why is it that Americans have the highest calcium consumption in the world, yet poor bone health? How can a diet soda with zero calories make you gain weight? Here's the second thing that will change your life. Are you ready? Every food or beverage is alkaline, acidic, or somewhere in between. Alkalinity and acidity are measured in terms of pH, which stands for potential of hydrogen. This is a pH scale. It ranges from 0, the most acidic, to 14, the most alkaline. For example, let's consider the following pH values. Your stomach acid is 1, diet soda is 2.5, coffee 3, water 7, your blood ranges from 7.35 to 7.45, seawater is 8.5, and baking soda is 12. Ideally, human blood should be slightly alkaline, between 7.35 and 7.45 on the pH scale. Your body won't allow your pH to become imbalanced. If it did, you would die. Your body has built-in mechanisms such as respiration, perspiration, urination, and mineral depletion, which keep it in balance. The trouble begins when your body has to work overtime to maintain balance. An imbalance is primarily due to the overconsumption of acid-forming foods and beverages, as well as unhealthy stress. We consume considerably more acid-forming than alkaline-forming foods and beverages. We consume too much coffee, caffeine, soda pop, beer, alcohol, processed foods, fried food, high fructose corn syrup, sugar, artificial sweeteners, and animal proteins, just to name a few. In addition to our unhealthy food and beverage choices, we live in a world that keeps speeding up potentially leading to high levels of unhealthy stress, which also increases acidity. Foods and beverages run the gamut of the pH scale. There are a few general rules. Animal products are for the most part acidic. Let's look at ice cream, cheese, yogurt, beef, lobster, chicken, pork, shellfish, venison, and fish. Vegetables and fruits are primarily alkaline. Let's look at snow peas, spinach, tomatoes, lettuce, squash, potatoes, cabbage, broccoli, asparagus, and sweet potatoes. And fruits, let's look at oranges, bananas, grapes, cherries, grapefruit, mangoes, raspberries, watermelons, lemons, and limes. I know you're thinking we got this wrong. Lemons and limes are acidic, right? Well... The classification of whether a food or beverage is acidic or alkaline is based on the effect it has on the body after digestion. For example, lemons are extremely acidic in their undigested form. However, their end product after digestion is more alkaline, making lemons alkaline forming in the body. A simple way to increase the alkalinity of a glass of water is to add a slice of lemon or lime. Let's see where popular drinks fall on the pH scale. We have soda, beer, coffee, alcohol, and tea. And how about water? Well, let's look at distilled water, bottled water, spring water, and mineral water. Another general rule is the more processed the food, the more acidic it will be. However, just because a food or beverage is acidic doesn't mean it's unhealthy. Blueberries and walnuts are both acid-forming foods, but they have tremendous health benefits. It's more important to pay attention to the overall trend. Remember when we said Americans eat a diet rich in acidic foods? Let's examine some typical American meals. How about a burger, french fries, and a soda? Or a steak, baked potato, and glass of wine? Or what about fried chicken, baked beans, corn, and a beer? Or the all-American picnic of a hot dog, potato chips, and a salad, chip soda? These meals force your body into an acidic state. So let's bring this all together. What happens when your diet is too acidic? As previously mentioned, your body is constantly putting mechanisms in place to maintain a balanced pH. When your body has to work overtime to maintain balance, the trouble begins. As the blood becomes too acidic, less than 7.3 or so, mechanisms kick in to bring the blood pH back to about 7.4. The breathing rate increases to remove carbonic acid by exhaling carbon dioxide. The kidneys increase the acidity of the urine. 
minerals begin to be leached out of the body and the blood pH is quickly back to normal. Here's the kicker. To compensate for an acid forming diet and high levels of stress, the body uses alkaline forming minerals such as calcium, magnesium, iodine, potassium, and sodium. Well that's good, right? What's the problem? The problem is that by eating diets rich in acidic foods, Americans are forcing their bodies to use these precious minerals to achieve balance. Let's take a look at some health problems related to an acid forming diet and high levels of stress. One of the fastest growing categories of medications in the US are medications that relieve acid reflux. These medications relieve the discomfort, but are they truly fixing the problem? Ask yourself, why do I have acid reflux in the first place? Acid reflux medications are simply introducing alkaline forming compounds in your body to counteract an acid forming diet. This program has helped many people completely do away with acid reflux medications simply by improving the quality of foods and beverages they consume. The U.S. has one of the highest calcium intakes in the world, but still has poor bone health when compared to other countries. Why? If we're consuming enough calcium to keep our bones healthy, what's the problem? An acid-forming diet forces your body to leach alkaline-forming minerals, such as calcium, to neutralize the pH of your blood. One of the major culprits is the overconsumption of acidic beverages, such as soda, coffee, energy drinks, and alcohol. And what is the number one source of calories in America? Soda pop. The average American drinks over 46 gallons per year. Many people might say, it's okay, I drink diet soda. We've heard of people having maybe three or four or even up to 10 diet sodas a day. Why not? There's zero calories, right? What if the very thing that you thought helps keep weight off actually put weight on? How? Diet sodas, as well as regular sodas, contain phosphoric acid. Phosphoric acid is right next to battery acid on the pH scale. Constantly flooding the body with an acidic beverage, as we now know, results in the leaching of many minerals. We discussed the leaching of calcium, but now let's focus on iodine. Iodine helps support the health of the thyroid gland. Without iodine, the thyroid cannot work properly. One of the main functions of the thyroid is to regulate the body's metabolism. If you have an underproducing thyroid, your metabolism can become sluggish and weight gain can follow. And that's how a drink with zero calories can cause you to gain weight. So, so tell me, how do I balance my body's pH? It's simple. Two things, R&R &R and proper diet. First, rest and recovery. Take time for yourself. Get more sleep. Take regular vacations and try to get a little downtime each day. Secondly, diet. Consume foods and beverages that have high alkaline levels. Now there's no need to memorize these foods we presented. In the attachments tab in the upper right, you'll find the food target, which takes the guesswork out of the equation. The food target ranks foods from poor in the outer circle to best in the inner circle. One of the main considerations in developing the food target was the effect the food has on your pH. If you're curious, you can monitor your pH on a regular basis by the use of litmus strips. These may be purchased at most health food stores or pharmacies and measure the pH of your saliva or urine. On a side note, the pH of your saliva and urine should fall between 6.8 and 7.2.